Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. And before we dive into our topic, I want to know more about you, everyone in here. So, is there anyone here that is content creators? Can you raise your hand? Okay, <laughs> there's a lot. So, anyone uh, is teachers? Any teachers? Any bankers? Business owners? Anyone's just like me doing marketing and also working in technologies. Wow, <laughs> that knows a lot. So I have a question for you that I think is going to touch us all no matter what we do or do not. Will us be replaced by the AI? I think this question is the question that you have not heard before or have not think before this event. Because you think that, oh, it's too far away. But I want you to make your quick answer related to my questions. Will it be replaced by the AI? So anyone say yes, can you raise your hand? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, how about who thinks no? Yes, as long as that. So I think there's a lot of people still like concerned about it and have not have the answers. So I will walk you through some facts about these technologies. So 85 million jobs could be automated by the AI in the next year. So that is the world. How about in Vietnam? 76% of leaders say that they will not hire people without the AI skill. So what do you think next? The first time where I heard about the word AI is seven years ago when I applied for the job that's still working out. And the company names in Vietnamese mean me and who's, I, I is, AI is who's in Vietnamese. It's, that's quite a weird name and bring out a lot of curiosity to me as a content creator and that is also the part of the reason why I applied for this job. Little do I know at that time how AI profoundly changed our world and my own careers. So AI or artificial intelligence it stands for a computer system that actually can think, learn, and act like humans do. And actually, this is the robot. Her name is Ida, and four years ago, she stand at Tech as Art Force. Four years ago, even before me. And she's showcasing how capability the AI could be in the future, or even until now. So, I want you to do something for me. So. Now, let's close your eyes. Okay, don't cheat, okay? <laughs> let's close your eyes and thinking about this, this situation. Okay, so ring, ring, you receive a call from HR or your family members receive a call from HR and they said that your performance is evaluated by an AI system and you got fires. They have a more cost efficient solutions than you in the office. What do you think? What are you gonna think? Will you blame the AIs for what happened to you? Will you choose AIs to be your friends or your foes? So I think you also can keep that answers at the end of today and I will walk you through some more facts about what I think about AI. So we all stand here right in this beautiful city in the centrals of Vietnam but it's also a very heartbreaking place when the flood season comes. We have to welcome more than 15 storms every year in Vietnam and it washed away 600 houses, 300 people die and thousands and millions of animals also die during the flood de discharge. And the time for alerting people is only six hours and it often happens during the night. So 
it seemed to be there is nothing we can do about it. But thanks to the AI algorithms, now we can have the earlier forecast about flood features. That's about the weather forecast, but how about the health? So I think if you're concerning about the health, you can feel happy now. Five years ago, when I heard that my mom got cancer, it is a heartbreaking news for me, but I try my best to be the one, the most positive person in our house. I try to find a way that can cure her cancers or something that will not harm her good cells because the traditional method is going to do that. It's going to kill all the cells to be able to help, to help her recover from her own cancers. So at that time, the AI is not available for support hers, but now early diagnosis for lung cancers or also other cancer bring the higher hope, higher chance for people because the accuracy of this AI can lead to 95% and it bring a lot of opportunity for patients to recover from cancers. So now, I think that at the moment, AI can also support you with a lot of further things like writing your email, support you, all the things, do a lot of things for your works. So on average, based on the recent research, six months ago, a lot of workers, uh, they find out that for non-technical roles, AI is going to save you from one to five hours per week if you choose to use it. For technical roles, it's even higher. It could be from five to ten hours per week. So I think AI now will not replace you, but make sure that you're aware from it and someone with the AI skill will. So how can we prepare for that? So for me, because I am used to be a very like not tech savvy at all, I know nothing about the AI or technology in general. So I had my own fears so when I applied for that job. And I tried my best to overcome my own fears. And I think about, oh, I have to start with something. I have to start with my own mindset. So, okay, let upskill, reskill, do something about it. So, so at that time, I tried to find what kind of skill I need to learn in this era, in this technology era. So I searched on Google and I found out fourth. So that is people management. You can do that. I think everyone could practice on that. Critical thinking, creativity, and mathematics. <laughs> mathematics is not something that everyone can do, but yeah, we can try out that. So let's think about the time, how long it takes for you if you choose AI to be your companions. So normally for a new habit, it's going to take from three to six months. So you can be good at some things. But uh, I would highly recommend you to use the first 20 hour rules. So this rule is that you select an AI tool or the new skill that you want to really focus things on. Choose a tool that more like relatable for yourself if you are like a uh, content creator, you can use ChatGPT. If you create an image, you can use Stable Diffusers. There's a bunch of AI tools that are now available for all of us. So first, you select the tool that you want to learn. Second, you learn the basics. So just basic thing without any documentations or any user guideline. You just, just try to figure it out it's by yourself. And then you practice and get feedback from other people and surround yourself with people that want to learn just like you. Create a community where other people can learn from each other. So I think for women, we have to like spread ourselves in different pieces for work, for families. And myself, I have a kid two years old. I have to spend a lot of time with her but trying to find my own time to build up myself. So some of my friends at the same age with me also do the same things. And thanks to the AI, uh, one of my friends, she's uh, the legal officer, and now she don't have to like two focusings on the pile of documents to search for the regulation, the rules that she wants to know. She just needs to answer, to ask the questions. 
ask what she wants to know, and then the AI assistant can give her the answer that she wants to. And moreover, I also know a lot of people that they learn AI by themselves, by applying that rule, and then they become an AI trainer. They train other people to know more about these technologies. And also, there's a lot of people that interest on AI technologies that bring the higher features for them. I have a co-workers that he will skip his master's degree and jump right into the PhD degree in Australia at the age of 25, 26. How amazing that is. So I think strongly believe that soon enough, everyone can use AI at their wings to achieve their goals, higher and faster. So myself, I'm the person that representing 8.5% of IT workers is women in Vietnam. And I'm not even the, the woman that in the major city. I'm in this city, in the central of Vietnam. But this is me. This is where I have been to. So I am from the non-technical person in the central of Vietnam, now becoming a woman in tech that travel the world to Jakarta, Singapore, Dubai, standing on the biggest state events for startup that have 40,000 AI startup that competing each other to become the AI disruptors, showcasing the conversational AI solutions that make by the Vietnamese people and showcasing the Vietnam intelligence to many technology leaders all around the world. So I think the genders, the age, the locations, is that matters? The truth is none of that matters to you if you decided to choose what you want to learn, what you want to express, what you want to achieve in your futures. And back in the day when I still do the volunteer work in the northern mountainous areas of Vietnam, there is a question that I always keep in my mind that I think about it. So, okay, so how can we fill the gap, the economic gap, the knowledge gap, the literacy gap for the children, for the people in Vietnam, in the rural area of Vietnam? So when can we can stand stronger? And amidst the ray of AI, I think I see the answers. The answer is that we could be preparing ourselves that we can use the education to empower everyone to thrive. We also can preparing children, teachers, workers, business owners, not just to coexist with AI, but also to lead the AI with creativity and resilience. So to be led or to lead. You have your choice to choose. And for women out there who's just like me, I think it's really good opportunity for you to apply these technologies that see the un unlimited possibility that it can bring to you. So make your choice. My choice is to, to upskill, reskill, and to fill the gap and serve the rise of AI. So, I leave the message for you. Thank you.